everybody argues about, you know, organic being better than inorganic. Again, going into the literature, you can find really good quality inorganic zinc sulfate, which gives you the same response as an organic trace mineral. And so even within the inorganic world, it's not a black and white issue. I would say, as I've often said for many things, know your supplier, okay? You know, when we got into the ethanol world, the first question was, know your ethanol supplier. Hello and welcome to the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we discuss the latest in poultry nutrition uh, industry and research trends in approximately 10 minutes or less. Uh, my name is Sam Rochel. I'm an associate professor of poultry nutrition at Auburn University and co-host of the show. Uh, and here we are today at part two, uh, talking about trace minerals, specifically zinc with Dr. Mike Lilburn, a longtime expert in the field. Uh, who's giving us a lot of insight that he's gained uh, over his years of working uh, with zinc and the skeletal system uh, in a recent review paper that, that he has published. So uh, with that, we'll jump right into it. It's interesting, too, about the absorption. I, I agree. I mean, it's, it's I, I've seen it proposed that, that you know, these bound zinc organic sources can be absorbed intact, but I mean, they can also be, you know, at, at the brush border uh, disassociated in the amino acid or, or whatever absorbed and then the zinc absorbs so absorbed separately. Uh, and, and at that point there, you know, within the enterocyte, it, it's, it's zinc and then it's going to be rebound to something and then transported regardless of where it comes from. So I think you're right that, that we have a lot of questions to answer there too. With any, with any aspect of nutrition, whether it's human, swine, poultry, you know, the, uh, the degree of sophistication of our technology has, has just increased many, many fold. And I think that um, in the case of zinc, I think in the case of transporters, uh, the ability through molecular biology to come up with um, new zinc proteins, um, you know, certainly we're much more aware of the specificity of zinc to different types of transporters, different types of proteins within the intestine. Um, but our ability to recognize that zinc is bound by a host of new proteins slash enzymes, um, you know, has not been necessarily yet associated with the functionality or the metabolism. Okay. That level of technology is exquisite. I think it's accurate. Um, but I, it, it does not lend itself to interpretation of the importance of zinc. Um, and I think that's the next level. And, you know, that kind of basic, that kind of basic work um, is tedious. It's very expensive. And, um, you know, it's not really something that lends itself to competitive grant funding. And so, um, I think that recognition is 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 there. As zinc certainly is involved in a host of new proteins and enzymes we weren't aware of five or ten years ago. But just the fact that you can um, you can measure it, okay, um, doesn't feed into the requirement question. Um, the other thing I think that um, again, in Michael Obert's opinion, is the fact that you know you have certain tissues that could be a, a, a sink sink as in S-I-N-K, for zinc. And, um, and, and the bone is one of those tissues, okay? There's no question about the importance of zinc in skeletal growth. And that goes back to Cornell and Young and Hardy Edwards, whose name is familiar to many people. Um, but you can get zinc accumulation in the bone. It will be a sink. And I think that sometimes, you know, when people do titrations, you know, they'll, they'll look at a level of zinc and they'll look at bone zinc and accumulation. And simply because it accumulates in sometimes a linear fashion that you could have put an R square to, uh, does not necessarily that it, it doesn't have a functionality component to it. And so I think that's an important thing to, to look at is the fact that um, just because you can get accumulation up to a certain point that is linear, does not necessarily mean that that ties into the animal's requirement for, in this case, zinc. And um, the other thing I don't mention at all in my um, in my review is uh, is the importance of zinc and immune function. 
And um, and I think I have a whole bunch of uh, Mike Kidd references in my reference section. I didn't get into that at all. Um, and of course, now the microbiome. Um, the data on zinc and immune function, I really believe. Uh, Mark Cook had some really, really good papers on that at the University of Wisconsin. Of course, Mike and some of the things he did at NC State um, certainly support the role for zinc and immune, fun and immune function. But that is a whole separate can of worms, you know, in terms of functionality. Uh, do I believe that relationship exists? Absolutely. Um, but the specificity of it, um, I think, is really open for obviously a lot more work being done. Um, and then the second thing is, and I want to get off on a little bit of a tangent as I've thought about this podcast, is, is the microbiome. You know, um, Zinc at mega doses was commonly used in the swine industry, you know, basically right around weaning time and some weaning associated diarrhea. And, and part of zinc oxide, in this case, part of its role in alleviating some of the diarrhea issues, you know, were, were effects on the, the intestinal microbiome. In this case, some kinds of uh, uh, making it a more, you know, making it less prone to pathogenic bacteria and some other issues. Um, you know, the microbiome, again, is um, obviously it is going to be the, um, you know, the area most explored in nutrition over the next 20 years. It's obviously important. Um, and obviously roles of any trace minerals, any trace nutrients in, in the microbiome and its control um, is yet to be unlocked in terms of functionality. Um, you know, sometimes if you go down through the literature, the role of trace minerals, um, you know, do not give you necessarily a cause and effect response. Sometimes the response is a uniformity response, where in a population of animals or poultry, um, some of the literature, their first observations were not that zinc deficiency caused X, Y, or Z, but it gave you more homogeneous population at the end of the experiment. And I think, I personally think, and this is a hypothesis with no data, that part of the role of some of these trace nutrients and the microbiome are going to relate to this, this concept of homogeneity, okay? Taking a very heterogeneous microbiome, which you might find in commercial production, and through the use of some trace nutrient or combinations thereof, including trace minerals, you get a more homogeneous microbiome, which then results in a healthier animal, okay? Because you have fewer animals. I mean, let's face it, what is the end result of commercial production? It's a flock of birds coming out the back end. It's not the individual birds within. And I think if we come up with looking at the homogeneity of the microbiome in response to some of these treatments, as opposed to simply, you know, cause and effect responses, I think that's where some of our thinking has to come to fore. And um, as we move forward in some of these, uh, these new areas, the microbiome being one, uh, the animal health being the other. Um, and then the other thing is, I think that um, and really the reason why they got rid of zinc oxide in, in swine production uh, basically were the environmental effects. And, um, you know, I think that the levels that we're often using of zinc um, in pockets of, you know, intense poultry production, um, I think that's another reason for looking at the effect of phytase at reducing the levels we're comfortable with. Um Basically, there's the environmental component to it. Um, and, then, and then the last thing I'll say on this in terms of uh, from a nutrient standpoint, um, everybody argues about, you know, organic being better than inorganic. Again, going into the literature, you can find really good quality inorganic zinc sulfate, which gives you the same response as an organic trace mineral. And so even within the inorganic world, it's not a black and white issue. I would say, as I've often said for many things, know your supplier, okay? You know, when we got into the ethanol world, the first question was, know your ethanol supplier or, um, or your DDGS supplier, I should say. 
So I, I think that there are some of these things that um, get built into our current levels of thinking that we really need to explore them a little bit more and, and really be aware of the quality of our sources. Ready for more sustainable poultry production? New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. No, I totally agree. Uh, it, it's a it's a complex nutrient. Um, we've got a lot of interesting things, both nutritionally and then beyond the nutrition indirectly. Um, so, you know, really appreciate uh, you sharing your thoughts on this, taking some time to, you know, write a review essentially on your own time in retirement and uh, just for the benefit of us. And, and as always, talking with you, Dr. Lilburn, this is a good reminder for me to uh, of how to think about things and, uh, you know, both logically and outside the box a little bit, too. So always uh, good to get your perspective. So really appreciate it. Well, Sam, it's good to see you as always. Glad things are going well. And, um, you know, further down the road, uh, if this opportunity comes up again, um, I, I really look forward to, uh, to your podcast. I mean, your collective podcasts and that, that you folks are putting on. So it's a major contribution. It's one thing I think that technology has really broadened our exposure significantly. And I, and I applaud you folks for that. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And, and thanks again for taking your time. And, and to all the audience, thank you for your time. And if you enjoyed this, as Dr. Lilburn said, you want to keep up to date with the uh, latest ongoings in poultry nutrition, this is a great way. So please, uh, you know, follow and subscribe on, on whatever platform you're accessing. And uh, until then, we'll catch you on the next one. So thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.